Hello friends, Chris Corsi here, president of Thrive Today, and I want to welcome you to Relational Skills in the Real Life Podcast. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to focus on an amazing story from big-hearted mother Shonda, who gives us an example of how some attunement, a bit of curiosity, and how staying connected with Jesus as she stayed relational with her son really changed a dynamic. What could have been a nasty blow-up turned into a very smooth interaction And Shonda uses the term synchronize, how she synchronized with her son um, as another way of saying how she attuned. So enjoy what Shonda has to share and we'll pick right up at the end. Hey, my name is Shonda Myers and I have a story for you about synchronization. When my son was 16, I was learning about synchronization. And at the time we weren't getting along so well and I needed help. And the synchronization came into play one day when I was gonna go get his attention. And the way I used to do that was to just yell his name and expect him to come and see me and do what I asked him to do. And Jesus stopped me at the bottom of the stairs right before I was about to yell his name. And he said, hey, let's try something new. And I stopped and I was like, what's that going to be? I don't know. You know, what is this something new? He said, let's try going up the stairs and getting his attention and synchronizing with his face first. And I said, Jesus, what in the world? I can't do that. I've never done that before. I, okay, okay, I'll do it. So I took a breath and I decided, okay, I'm gonna go up the stairs just like Jesus told me to. And I felt like I had never gone up those stairs before. My body was rigid and like a robot. And I really had no idea how my son was gonna respond to this. And I just was treading the unknown, but I went up the stairs, step by step, got to the doorway and he was facing the doorway while playing video games. And he said, Jesus said to me, just get his attention. So I stepped in and sort of looked and waited to get his eye contact and we made eye contact and I stayed. And he stopped what he was doing, took his headphones off, and he, was, he said, yes. And I said, um, hey, uh, so I have a question to ask you. Do you have a minute? And he looked at me, and he was thinking, and he said, sure. And I said, Um, you know, one of the things that your dad is expecting is to have the lawn mowed and I noticed it needed to be mowed and I was just coming up to ask you if you have time to mow the lawn. And I heard in my ear, my mentor's voice say, it's okay for him to say no. And so I said to him for the first time in my life, it's okay for you to say no. And he jerked back his head and he lifted up his eyebrows and he said, no. And I didn't really know what to do at that moment, but I took another deep breath and I said, well, okay. And so I walked out of his room, but I stopped right outside of his room. And my my body is just like, what is going on? You know, I'm sort of trembling in this trembling faith you know and I said Jesus what do I do now and he said go back in there and ask him why okay so I went back in and I said "Uh, do you have another minute and he said sure and I said do you mind if I ask you why you don't want to mow the lawn and he said it's no big deal I mean really it's just because me and daddy aren't getting along right now. And I just don't feel motivated at all to do anything for him. And I said, you know, you're right. I have noticed that y'all have not been getting along. I noticed the tension and I've seen it. So I get that. 
It's totally okay. I just wanted to check and find out. So I left the room and I went downstairs and I sort of just had to chill out for a moment. Really didn't understand what just happened, but it was the first time that synchronization ever happened in my home. And honestly, the result was he did come down later. He did do a few things for his dad. He did end up mowing the lawn. And we had just a genuine moment of me acknowledging him and synchronizing with him just helped him to pursue something that is like him to do. So I was so proud of him and so thankful to have learned the, the lesson on synchronization. Wow, wasn't that amazing, friends? What Shonda had to say really is inspiring for all of us that we can stay relational, we can stay curious, we can tune into what Jesus is doing and saying, and we can interact with others in a way that is attuned rather than misattuned. And so attuned interaction means that we are able to mirror what others are saying and feeling. We are able to stay on the same wavelength, the same page with others and what they're feeling. And so Shonda was able to be curious. She was able to listen to what Jesus was saying and doing, and she was able to be relational with her son. And so the good news here with Shonda's story is we're all going to have examples this week of how we can practice staying curious. A, a bit of curiosity goes a long way. It helps us stay relational and it helps other people stay relational. We all like to share what's going on, right? We all like to share something that's important to us. So when we're staying curious with other people, we give them the opportunity to share what's going on in them. And we know from scripture, Jesus did what he saw the father doing, and he said what he heard the father saying. And so Shonda gives us a really good example of the skill we call God sight, which is seeing some of what God sees. Friends, there's a lot more here that you can dive into and learn. So I wrote the Joy Switch book as a simple little practice guide with exercises, with a lot of good content and some stories to help you be able to live in your relational sweet spot, just like Shonda did, and to see the good stuff grow in our relational gardens. And my friend Marcus Warner and I wrote a book called The Four Habits of Joy-Filled Kids. And so this would be another really good book that could help give some practical uh, guidelines and steps and practices that you can do to grow some joy. Joy is just a smile away, my friends, and you're going to find there's a lot of good opportunities to show up relationally, to listen to what Jesus might be saying and doing, and to be curious.